it will give you a little shock or something less invasive, even though invasive seems to be okay these days. Hey there, it's Saturday morning, not Sunday morning like it normally is. Even though you're watching this on Sunday, I'm recording it on Saturday for various reasons. I'll get right to the title to begin with. No, no one took my idea. A title is strictly made up to try to get people to click. <laughs> and, um, but I should say that I did have the idea before, well, well before I guess that he did because I went back and I looked when I bought these files and I couldn't actually find it. It's that far back. And um, you have to go back to when I was doing metalworking projects a bit more frequently where I would actually use a file. Because whenever you use a file, unless you're using it like textbook, perfect, you know, stroking full length right from tip to heel, <laughs> don't do it right in the middle. Well, you get like a million critiques of that too. It has to go right tip to heel, right? Forward only, lift, forward only, lift. Unless you're doing that, you're going to get a bunch of people, you know, criticizing your use of the file. So I bought two and I was going to do, well, I wasn't going to do it mechanically like he did it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Fireball Tools. Just put a video out testing, <laughs> which seems to be the, you know, the, the go-to videos these days, the stuff that people are interested in. They're not interested in anything that's actually, you know, doing something or accomplishing anything useful. Like, all you need to do is talk to somebody that's been using a file for long enough, and they'll tell you that backstroking the file, even if it does make it slightly... Uh, dollar, it's absolutely worth it because you save so much time. Okay, who wants to go on ahead lifting up, you know, pulling back, lifting? There's too much, like you can't rapidly file something down that way. So you go back and forth like a saw. Like who uses a handsaw? <laughs> as far as that goes, by just pushing ahead, like the standard American handsaw. By pushing ahead, lifting it out of the cut, you know, putting it back in the cut. No, nobody. Okay. So you would, you would do it this way, back and forth rapidly to get it done. And if it's, you know, if you wear out the file a little bit quicker, who cares? It's just a file. They're cheap. I think these ones were $8.99. They're made in China, but you know, this is hardened, high carbon steel, hard to mess that up. Yeah. I had the idea to do it. I wasn't going to do it mechanical. I was just going to do it by hand. Basically stand there, stroke, stroke, you know, cut the number of strokes, have a look at the file, see how it was cutting. And the way I would judge how well it was cutting after doing so much was to have a piece of white paper with the piece of steel underneath it, like above it. And then you stroke it and you see how much steel is coming off and compare it to the one where you're just, you know, sawing back and forth. So yeah, I didn't do it though. I never got around to doing it. And I can tell you, <laughs> I can tell you with absolute certainty, because I would have put it on my red logo channel, that I wouldn't have got a million views on it. That's for sure. This is the project that I released on Friday and it's not doing well. That's not unexpected. It's a cool looking project. I tried to get a thumbnail. You know, having it open, you know, like that, make it look interesting, but nobody's biting. Okay, so none of the looky loos are biting. So yeah, it's not doing well, which is typical for my projects where I do something that involves, you know, a little bit more work than just slapping something on the table saw and testing it out type thing. So I made this in three units, and if I hold it right, it won't open up. Because originally I was going to do it in one single one, like one tall one, and I was going to have dividers between every drawer. And then I thought, well, what if you make it in three? And then you'll be able to just use three, three drawers like this, and they'll, they'll work relatively well, okay? A lot of people suggest washers in between. You can do that. Or you can just put thin dividers in through here, just on the front. That's all you really need it, just on the front. 
like you don't need a full width panel that goes all the way back just like a, a strip that's one eight, one inch wide and about an eighth of an inch thick and put it here in between it really doesn't even need to be fastened on the ends although it would be a good idea to you know kind of dado that in on the ends and then i don't know that that would ruin the appearance but i like the way this looks and i was liking the way this looked in my mind's eye when i was designing it and then when i drew it out in sketchup so i made three which gives you more uh, flexibility you can stack them you can put them end for end i got this in the mail the other day from drew at fisher shop if you don't watch his videos well worth watching he does stuff that's similar to what i do and very interesting projects well designed stuff doesn't put out a lot of videos but the ones that he does put out are excellent uh, i think the recent one was a ping pong table that um, folds up very interesting and you can see this push stick is made from walnut, so it kind of matches my box. <laughs> Timing on that one. And um, it has my logo put in there. So it's personalized. And it's beautiful. It feels awesome. And do you think I'm going to be cutting this apart on the table saw? No. I'm going to put that over there on the door with the rest of the tools that I've got up there. My parts organizer video bombed even though I put a lot of effort into the project and also making the video but my silly sanding stuff has been doing well okay and another one is <laughs> the pyramid video that I did I don't know three years ago four years ago that took off again at some point over a month ago and it racked up another almost 2 million views. And that was a nice little Christmas bonus there with that. So, you know, I'm not overly beaten up about this not doing well. I think this reached the target audience. Um, the target audience being real woodworkers are people that are actually interested in doing woodworking and not just the looky loos. The looky loos click on, the looky loos provide the bulk of the clicks that you get on any video. But you, what you really want for something like this, especially where it's a promo for the Maker's Mob, is to get people that are actually really interested in woodworking, not, you know, the looky loos. Because the looky loos just sit around munching Cheetos, watching YouTube, watching Netflix, and generally don't do anything productive or useful. So, getting the woodworkers to look at the video is a good thing, okay? Not just for me, but for them, too, because that's a great resource. And, you know, here's your opportunity to get in at just 99 cents. Join myself, Jimmy DiResta, the Samurai Carpenter, John Peters, Frank Howarth, and Neil Paskin for the Maker's Mob annual Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale. We have put together 27 of our most popular woodworking plans, and all of those come with step-by-step -step video tutorials for just 99 cents. To access our biggest sale of the year, simply click the link in the description. But act fast because this offer expires on Monday at midnight. I've got a couple other things I want to mention, although they're not really material to you guys. And that's my uh, uh, wooden katana that I made last year and put the project on my website, well, Google has, has deemed that a weapon and has demonetized the page. So I don't have to do anything. I don't have to take the, uh, the project down, but they're not gonna run any ads on that because that's clearly a weapon. You know, that wooden replica of a sword. Another one was, and I, I found this even more surprising, was that my um, steel shuriken fidget spinner you know, the one with the bearing in the middle. Remember a couple of years ago, fidget spinners were all the rage and there were people making those things. And I made one. It was like 11 million views I got out of that. Didn't make much money because, you know, advertisers want to stay away from the weapons. They do. But <laughs> this is taking it even further. It's blocked. It's completely banned in Russia. The Russian government has said that that is illegal. I told Google that it's on the blacklist of you know pages on the internet so it's been added to the block i've been added to the blacklist 
and Google then blocked it in Russia. You can see it everywhere else in the world except for Russia, as far as I know. Right, right now. <laughs> That's right now. I mean, eventually all these, you know, dangerous videos will start to disappear. They'll be blocked here, they'll be blocked there, they'll be, you know, demonetized there, and they won't show up there. And, and you know, eventually you know, they'll all be gone. Everything will be so, like, the entire population of the world will be so happy and so safe because all of the danger will be removed. And they'll be just walking around with these big smiles on their face all the time. And in fact, you know, there'll be cameras here and there that will be looking at you or your phone. You look at your phone, they'll be looking right back at you. And it'll detect if you are not smiling, if you start to frown, it will give you a little shock or something less invasive. Even though invasive seems to be okay these days, it will you know, give you demerit points on your social score, okay? If you start to frown a little bit or seem unhappy, that will cost you, <laughs> either physically or with demerit points on your social score. And then, you know, if you, if you go down too low in your social score, then you're a non-person. You might as well just move out into the woods, okay, and live on grass and any rabbits you can catch. Once you become a collectivist, mm -hmm. bottom line, you don't see individuals anymore. When you stop seeing individuals anymore, you dehumanize the enemy at a mm. further level and you are willing to do worse things. Also, you don't see yourself as an individual anymore and that strips away any sense of I am responsible. And once